Greetings and welcome to our daily walk through the scripture for June the 25th. Your readings today find you in 2 Kings chapter 9, starting in verse 14, going all the way through 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 31. And then we have Acts chapter 17, Psalm 144, verses 1 through 15, and Proverbs chapter 17, 27 and 28. Now, before we dive into Acts, 2 Kings, I mean, this is where Ahab's house, this is where all of those promises that God made uh, came true. And Ahab's house is demolished. Jezebel is thrown out of a balcony and uh, basically the dogs lick her blood. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a brutal, horrible, terrible thing that happens to them. Uh, and, and the lesson we can learn from this is that we don't always understand God's timing on things. And we're going to see this actually quite a bit in the Old Testament. But God always keeps his promises. It may take longer than we think it should. But God always keeps his promises. And in this case, he very much did it, and it did it in just a, a very graphic way. And then we see Jehu being God's messenger and, and kind of trying to restore Israel back towards God. Uh, it doesn't last very long, unfortunately, uh, but, but Jehu does try to be faithful to God to an extent. Okay, we're going to jump over to Acts chapter 17 because we have uh, uh, one of Paul's famous scenes when he's in Athens, as we learn uh, in Acts chapter 17. And he goes in. Now, Paul has a routine that he does when he goes to a new place. And you see it actually in the chapter or in the verses prior to that, where he spends time first in the synagogues, trying to reason with the Jews that are there. Uh, and when that doesn't work, Paul then goes to the Gentiles. Even if it does work, Paul goes to the Gentiles. But that is Paul's method when he goes into towns that have uh, a Jewish synagogue. He goes in and he talks with them, reasons with them, and tries to get it. That's what we saw in, in Thessalonica. That's what we saw in Berea. But then Paul comes and ends up in Athens. And Athens, this is an important place in the Roman Empire. Because Athens is in many ways the the center of the intellectual world uh, back then. Now, you say, well, hold it, isn't, isn't Rome the center of the empire? Yes, but Athens is the center of the intellectual part of, of the philosophies and those kind of things. Roman culture actually, one of the things that Romans are famous for is, is taking the ideas of others and adopting them and making them their own. Um, that's why when you look at the Roman gods, there's such a close parallel with the Greek gods because that's that's how they do it. So Athens is a very important and prominent role, and all of Greece played a huge role in, in the philosophies of the culture. So when Paul goes there, Paul has a couple of options on the way that he can address and the way that he can, can share the gospel. But if you notice what Paul does is Paul takes time to understand the culture that he's in. So this is very different, I think, sometimes from methods that we were taught. Um, in the 70s, the Baptist had a thing called evangelism explosion. And basically what it was is they had they wanted people to go and ask others two questions. Okay, And, and one of them was if you were to die uh, today and stand before God and God said, why should I let you into my heaven, how would you answer them? That was, that was a significant part of the question, and it was designed for you to just use in any situation and anything. However, um, that's not what Paul did. Paul wasn't about, he wasn't trying to debate for the sake of debating. He was trying to reach people in a way that they could understand. He was trying to reach them with the gospel in ways that, that would resonate with them. And this is an important aspect for us followers of Christ. You know, we, we can't be... We shouldn't be the John 3.16 guy that just holds up signs. That doesn't really do a whole lot. It might create questions, but it, it doesn't answer the questions that are needed. Instead, we've got to do much like what Paul does. When Paul walks around and he finally sees that there's a way to relate to them, and so he visits with them about the altar of to an unknown God. And then he says, hey, I've got good news. I can tell you who this unknown God is. And he proceeds then to use that to transition to share the gospel. Now, here's the thing about it. This is the important part. The gospel message is always the gospel message. The gospel message does not change. The good news of Jesus never changes. How we approach and share the good news of Jesus does change. And it should adapt with the circumstances. How we approach someone in rural Texas versus how we approach someone that maybe is an immigrant up in Chicago or something like that. You're going to do it in different ways. You're not going to approach it the same way. 
you have to be wise and discerning about how you do it. That's exactly what Paul showed. Paul's witness never changed. Paul's gospel presentation never really changed at the heart of it. All it did was simply uh, change some of the ways that he approached it. This is a good word for us and something good for us to, to pay attention to, especially when we get opportunities to share the gospel. Okay, that's our conversation for today. We'll talk more tomorrow.